There's a woman in the scriptures, an Egyptian woman. Her name is Hagar. And uh, she waited 10 years for God to fulfill his promise. Well, I should say Sarah waited. She presented Hagar to Abraham, which was the custom. And Sarah's plan and Abraham's compliance actually demonstrated a lack of faith in God. But Hagar did become pregnant and she fled into the wilderness. There was a well on the way to Shur. She encountered the Malik Hashem there. The Malik Hashem is seen many times and in the Tanakh it is a personification of the Derek Chaim Moshiach Ben Dovid on the way a messianic appearance before his taking on flesh and, and being embodied in a human being. So the angel revealed Ishmael's future to Hagar, that this son that she was going to have, that his descendants would be a great multitude, and that she is the ancestress of the Arab peoples. And this is the well of the living God who sees me well. Beer Lahai Roy, mentioned in the Torah. So when Hagar returned to Abraham's camp, Ishmael was born and he was accepted by Abraham as his son. So here we see Abraham as the father of not just the Jews through Isaac or Yitzhak, but the Arabs through Ishmael. And Hagar and Ishmael wandered in the wilderness and their water ran out and Hagar laid her son under a shade to die. And again, the Malik Hashem appeared and showed her a well. And this is a picture of God's love for the outcast and for the Arabs. And we need to go to Sermons for the World and see Robert Heimer's sermon on Hagar and also what he has to say, the link there for evangelizing Arabs. And Hagar was saved by sheer grace. And she experienced the presence of God. This is a numinous experience where you know you're in the presence of Almighty God. Many children have reported having this experience. And this is the God who sees me. She suddenly knows that she's under benign surveillance. And I believe that this is something God wants us to think about tonight. Because Hagar, and that, that chapter 16, should be preached to the Muslims. And uh, when you look at Hagar, when you look at the uh, glorious 
story here that God did appear to her. She had an appearance. And uh, it says, uh, and the Malachi Shem said unto her, I will multiply thy Zerah exceedingly. In other words, she's going to She's going to have the same miracle that happened to Abraham. The same miracle. Verse 10 of chapter 16. And uh, when you look at that passage and you think of this glorious thing that happened, then you're reminded of of the promise to Hagar that her descendants, the Arab people who are alive today, who are well and thriving, it says, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly. It happened. And uh, this means that God has a promise to the Arab people. And this promise God will do by the preaching of the gospel. And that's why we have the website newcreations.app, N E W C R E A T I O N S dot app, A P P. It's all about reaching these people in all these different languages, with the four spiritual laws, with a Bible translated just for them, with uh, material that God gave us over a period of time, just for them. And this is really something that we want to think about. Ishmael was the eldest son of Abraham by Hagar. And Hagar was Sarah's Egyptian handmaid. And he and his mother were expelled. And God promised that Ishmael would be a, a man. And we see this in, in uh, the newspapers with his hand against every man and, and every man, his hand against him. We see all of the fighting that goes on in the Arab world. But his life was spared by God. And he married an Egyptian and became the father of 12 princes. And he was the forefather of the Arabs. And this is why Abraham is the father of many nations. And this is why uh, we, can't, we can't forget the Arabs, even while we're going to the Jews. And that's why we have AFII.org, which today we uploaded the entire Yiddish Bible. 39 books, not just the Yiddish, but in a diglot with the English Orthodox Jewish Bible side by side with the Yiddish. We also uploaded to our uh, website, afii.org forward slash uh, Yiddish.htm. We, we uploaded uh, the entire four spiritual laws in Yiddish and English and the four spiritual laws in Yiddish, the uh, Yeshua film is there as well in Yiddish. And uh, our app and the, all the websites that we have where the public domain of Aaron Krollenbaum's Yiddish Brit Adishah and Mordecai Samuel Bergman's updated 
public domain Yiddish Tanakh in a Tanakh Yiddish English diglot with Orthodox Jewish Bible in English. All of that went up today. And I really didn't know what I was doing. And I had to look to the, the Lord to help me with all this technology, but he wanted it done today. And it was done by the grace of God. And there was a, a great leader, William Carey. He said, expect great things from God, attempt great things for God. And that's what I did today by the grace of the Lord. And the Lord was with me and he helped me. And it's astounding to me because I know I didn't do that. I couldn't do that. We used to have somebody in our ministry who worked for the fire department, computer department. And he said he would sit down at the computer and he didn't know what he was doing. And he would pray and God would just help him. I know the feeling. I know what that's all about. And hallelujah. Uh, listen, there's a word about enslavement. Uh, let's see if I can pronounce it. Farknik. Uh, Kite, Farknik Kite, someone who's a Yiddish speaker might correct me here. Farknik Kite. It means enslavement. It means to be in servitude. And this is the problem of Het Kadmon. Because if you are a Muslim, you are enslaved to the old nature. But even in the Quran, it says, if, if God wills, he can remove you and put in your place a new creation so that you, you're like the butterfly, you escape the, the enslavement of the cocoon. You go from worm to butterfly. The worm that you used to be, you are no longer. You are now what Rob Shaul said. The evil I don't want to do, I do. The good that I want to do, I don't do. Who will deliver me from this body of death, from this enslavement? A slave master sin. We're talking about being uh, enslaved to the old nature. And you can be religious. You can give yourself every kind of self-help book therapy. You can have all kinds of, of uh, slogans that you say to yourself. You could go to a psychiatrist. You can go to a psychoanalyst. You could try in every way to escape this enslavement. Fe, Aleph, Resh, Kof, Nun, Ayan, Kaf, Tet, Final Noon. Thank God I can write it down, even if I can't pronounce it. Thank God people who can pronounce these words better than me will download them from the internet and fly through them and use them after they are freed themselves. He whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And they will have Bible studies in their home and in their uh, blogs and on their YouTube channel and everywhere else. They're gonna be using this material because it is beautiful, it is powerful. It is the language of the death camps the language of Dachau that was whispered uh, among the 60-pound uh, starving Jewish people behind the barbed wire. And now this language 
is being put out on the internet in a way that is biblical, scriptural, sound, and uh, usable by everyone in the household of faith. Now, when you get to newcreations.app, you will find that we use the word tetragrammaton written in Arabic letters every time we refer to God, where that is the Tanakh reference. It feels good to the Muslims and to the, the believers who have a problem with A-L-L-A-H, just like the Jews who have a problem with J-E-S-U-S. -S. Uh, all of our translations uh, overcome those problems because we want to reach both Arabs and Jews. And thank God Robert Heimers has put all of our stuff on his website, which is being downloaded in the millions by people in foreign countries all over the world. And we want to thank God for SermonCentral.com, where pastors are using our Bible to prepare their sermons on Saturday night. We want to thank God for all the websites he's given us, all the apps, all the uh, software uh, programmers, all the engineers, all the Bible, Bible translation consultants that have helped us. And hallelujah, even now, um, hallelujah, if you go to docs, D-O-C-S dot A-P-I dot Bible, you will see that the American Bible Society has a page with translations. And this page uh, includes our translation for developers who want to take the Orthodox Jewish Bible and make an app, uh, put, it in, put it in one of their apps. And this is wonderful what God has done. Hallelujah. And some of the stuff he's only done this week. So I'm sort of giving a testimony now of the goodness of God, that he has done these things for us. And uh, if you go to docs.api.bible forward slash guides, G-U-I-D-E-S forward slash Bibles, B-I-B-L-E-S, there you will see the American Standard Version and uh, the King James and all these others. And then you will see the Orthodox Jewish Bible right there. We wanna give God the glory for this. We wanna believe God that this over 1 billion world of Muslims will be reached. The new creations.app of, of, of a crew I'm praying, Lord, that it'll be used in every college campus and every university to reach the Muslim leaders of the future. And I'm praying also, Lord, that you will help us to get the word to the ultra-Orthodox Jewish people, the final frontier of Jewish outreach. Oh, what a glorious thing it will be when Hasidim walking down Lee Avenue in Williamsburg or walking down a street in Meisharim in Israel with their phone are actually reading the Yiddish Bible. And they are reading it because they are believers, because they have come to faith, because they have found the true Ribi Melech Hamashiach. You see, there is a Ribi Melech Hamashiach who is the true Ribi. Hallelujah. And he is the personification of the Derek Hachayim, the, the road of life. 
He is the road. He is the way. He is the life. Yes, the Etz Hayim that we see at the end of Bereshit chapter 3. The only way to get back there is on the road that, it, that he constitutes, that he embodies. The only way to get there is on the Derek Hayim of the Ribi Melech HaMoshiach in the scriptures. Over 300 and 50 prophecies are fulfilled by him. The odds of that happening in one man's life, one period of 30 years or so, are astronomical. They are one to the so many uh, dozens of zeros, you could not even write it all down and think about it and your mind couldn't even absorb it. There is no one else that can do this. No one else walked out of the graveyard. No one else can. He is not just a Navi. He's not just a Tzaddik. He is the owner. And uh, if you get uh, to this uh, passage in uh, Bereshus chapter 14, where Abraham is talking to Melchizedek, and there's Melchizedek with the with the, the lechem and the, the, the yayin, and he's going to receive a tithe from Abraham. And there he is. And what are they talking about? Possessions and ownership. And they have just got into a battle. And the king of Sodom is talking about this to Abraham. But God is the owner of heaven and earth. It's all about possession. And uh, Abraham has been given all these possessions. And God promised that he would do this. And also that 400 years in the future, his offspring would be in a land where they would be slaves, but, but they would come out with great possessions. And he doesn't want to take anything from the king of Sodom because he doesn't want anyone to ever say that the king of Sodom made him rich or gave him his possessions or his ownership. And many of these messianic uh, translations completely miss and mistranslate Proverbs chapter 8, which is all about Moshiach, the Devar Hashem, being possessed before any of the works of creation. And it's the same word, and it means the same thing. Even the uh, cattle, which are possessions, the word is formed with this. It's a commercial word. Kof Nun Hey, and it means to acquire, to possess. I've acquired a man. I've, uh, Hava says about her son, and his name is uh, is come. It comes from that word. But let me tell you, this one that we know is the owner. And because he's the owner, death could not hold him into in Sheol. The grave could not hold him. Why? He's the owner. Listen, if you own, let's say, a building, let's say the Empire State Building, 
if you're the owner, you can go into the basement. You can go to the first floor. You can go to the roof. You can go to the observatory area uh, on the on the top. You can even go on the very top. You can go anywhere in the building. Because he is the owner, because the Atik Yomin gave the Baranosh everything, all power. He is the Bahor. He, he's the one who gets the, the possession and the authority. Yes, he is the one. And therefore, because he is the owner, he can go to Sheol, he can go to heaven, he can come down to earth, he can be embodied in the womb of Alma, the young unmarried virgin. He can be the personification of the Derek Hachaim. And that's what we're preaching tonight. And we're talking about Abraham. And we're talking about chapters 14 and 16 and Hagar and preaching to the Arab women, the Muslim women, the uh, uh, Jewish uh, women, the Hasidic women, these women who are pushing a baby stroller and having 12 children and maybe aren't even allowed to read the Brit Hadashah or to have a Tanakh that is faithfully translated into Yiddish. These are the ones we're praying for. These are the ones that are the object of our nightly Zoom prayer meeting. And God is hearing our prayers and he is helping us. And he's doing this. And we want to give him all the praise. And we want to pray for every Hagar out there that she will realize that God sees her, that God loves her, that God wants her to come to salvation. Even if her mistress uh, or her master did not make the ba the best uh, example or or give her the best uh, gospel message. Still, by grace are you saved through faith, and this is not of yourselves. And can happen even if someone is really not a good witness to you. Lord, I wanna pray for all those Hagars who are somehow reachable, that they will be reached and that their Hasidic counterpart, all those women will be reached. And I wanna pray, Lord, that you will bring many women into the ministry and that any false teacher who says that women cannot have anything to do with the word of God are obviously ignorant of my namesake, Philip, who was Philip the Mavasser, who had four virgin daughters and they prophesied and they were preachers and they were not thrown out of the pulpit or muted when Rav Shaul's company arrived there at Philip's house on their way to Jerusalem. And if these false teachers want to cut those verses out of their Bible and forbid preaching to women, who in many cases are the only ones who can preach to women. Who were the people who went to Ecuador and reached those Stone Age 
tribes that killed the five martyrs back in the 50s, whose it pictures was. were on the uh, Time magazine, News, Newsweek magazine in the 50s. It was women. It was their wives that went in there and lived with them. They would not allow a man in there. There were women that, that did the translation of the Bible that figured out how to write down their language and how to put it in scripture by translating it and then preaching it. And now we see that Stone Age tribe of spear carriers who killed five preachers. Now we see them walking around born again in modern dress, completely saved. And in the 21st century, it happened with many uh, women preachers and any of these false teachers that would have wanted to, go, wanted to go down there and shoo those women out of that mission field would be speared for doing that. And I had been friendly with Elizabeth Elliot, who was Jim Elliot's widow. And she, I had sent her a letter about the um, Orthodox Jewish Bible. And she wrote me back and she was absolutely thrilled about it. I should have followed the relationship. She finally died of Alzheimer's. But wasn't she one of the women preachers and translators? That's what I said. And so uh, that's right. This is the point that Linda's making. And it's a good point. And Linda and others are uh, lady preachers. And they are being used. Marilyn Harry. Yes, they are being used. And I don't know whether I should mention all of them, but I, I, I want to say right now that I want to pray for all of them. Lord, we pray for every woman that has a call on their life. Every woman who can preach in Arabic, in Urdu, in Pashtun, in Russian, in Ukrainian or in any foreign language, that you would free their tongue, Rosemary. that you would fill them with the Holy Spirit, that you would use them on YouTube, that even with one scripture, one scripture in, in a foreign language, that they could just simply read it and the Holy Spirit would help them to say the words over and over again until they are anointed to say something about it in that language and all of a sudden their tongue will be loosed and they will be preaching and they will find that just like those four virgin prophetesses uh, in uh, the house of Philip, his daughters, in that uh, chapter in Acts as Paul is approaching uh, the uh, Jerusalem brethren in chapter 21 of the book of Acts. Just like those women, they will be able to speak and prophesy and preach and they will be used of God greatly. And oh God, may we see a thousand Hagars come into the ministry regardless of what any denomination tries to do to outlaw the power of the Holy Spirit or outlaw the power of a woman preacher. And we'll give you all the praise. Amen. Yeshua, come into my heart, forgive my sins, take control of my life, and I will serve you and follow you all the days of my life. And everyone said, amen.